Okay, so a client called me after their place because this computer uh, was not booting into Windows. It would power on, but just go to a black screen. If they tried it several times, it would eventually go into Windows and work for a little while, but then it was powering itself off just kind of randomly. So what I've done is I've brought it back to my place. Um, it was covered in dust. Uh, they're a hardware reseller, like uh, hardware fittings, screws, nuts, bolts, brackets of all kinds. Um, it had tons of like metallic dust in it. Um, so I blew that all out. I should have videotaped doing that. It was actually quite remarkable. Um, but it's all cleaned out now. So I've hooked it up here to this monitor right here. Um, what I'm going to do is give it power and turn it on just to verify it's having the same issue. It's primary power switch wasn't on, let's try that again. So the computer is powering on, but we're not getting a signal to the monitor. And on the front, I believe this is a hard drive activity light and it's not showing anything, so that's telling me that the computer is not booting up. All right, so let's turn it off. I'm going to hit the primary power switch. The symptoms it's having is pointing toward a problem with the power supply, in my experience. If the computer was coming on reliably, but then turning itself off after a period of time, I would have thought that maybe the CPU was overheating, which was certainly a possibility with all of the, uh, the dust and debris that was built up on it. But the CPU overheating doesn't account for the computer not turning on and going into Windows uh, reliably whenever you press the power button. Uh, that's one thing uh, that the, uh, the power supply certainly has control over. And they also told me that this got worse over time, which again points towards the power supply in my experience. Uh, what I'm going to do is disconnect its uh, power connections to the motherboard. Whenever you're pulling out the 24 pin, you want to kind of put a counter force on the motherboard and also end squeezing right here as you pull up, which allows this piece of plastic to let go of a little ridge of plastic on the, uh, the connector. Same thing with the 4-pin connector, and this can sometimes be an 8-pin connector, it's generally down by where the CPU is. Kind of reach them with your finger, your thumb, and hold down as you pull up, and there you go. So to test the power supply, um, I've got a power supply tester. Um, generally you plug the 4 or 8-pin in on one side and the 24-pin on the other. give the computer power and you don't have to press the power button on the front of the computer because the motherboard's not connected so if you turn on the primary power switch you get a readout okay so I'm not sure this is going to show up on video what it shows you is the different power readings coming from the power supply so one of the five volts is um, showing double H's I'm not sure if that's high or low being there's H's, I would say high. The 12 volts are all slightly low. Uh, they're reading as uh, 11.9, and that can be okay, but really this 5 volt that's having a problem is more than likely the cause of the issue with this power supply. So, that is showing me that the power supply has failed. I'll put a link in the description of the video to a... Uh, a power supply tester. I had this one for a good probably seven or eight years. Um, I'm not sure if it's still available. This one's from Antec. But I'll find a good one on Amazon and put a link to it. These, um, they're a useful tool, but I have seen it where a te this tester will show me that a power supply has failed, but it actually hasn't. I've also had it show me that a power supply is okay when it actually isn't. So they're not 100% reliable, but uh, a decent tool to have around. Really the only way to know if a power supply is good or bad is to swap it out 
for a, a known good power supply, and then if the computer comes on and works, then you know that the previous power supply was the point of failure. Okay, so I'm going to disconnect everything from the back of the computer and pick it up so I can work on it a little bit easier, as opposed to having it down on the floor. <clears throat> Okay, so what I need to do is go through and disconnect all of the components from the power supply. This computer has a solid state drive in it. It's down under here, as well as a hard drive. The hard drive is not connected. It's just kind of sitting in, sitting in here. I replaced the hard drive with the solid state drive probably three or four years ago just to make the computer faster. Okay, so that's all bundled together. And really, the motherboard and the uh, the power supply and this... DVD drive down here, the uh, the only com components in the computer Let's see on the SATA connections you have to hold down a little thing to let them eject as well alright so let's get this power supply undone it's got four screws that are holding it in dropped a screw alright there it is screws. On some computers down here at the bottom there's a little thing you have to press in on to get them to actually release from the case. This case does not have that. And there is the power supply. I'll go grab a replacement here. I've got a few <clears throat> in boxes. Looks like the same brand as the one that failed. Let's see. We want to make it, I want to put it in so that the power supply's fan is facing into the case. If you have a computer case where the power supply is at the bottom and there's a spot at the bottom of the computer case to actually bring air into the power supply, you can have it so that the fan is facing towards the bottom. <clears throat> but if you don't have that, it's good to make it so that it faces into the case. All right. I'm going to get each of the screws started in the holes. If you're doing this, you need to make sure the screws go in straight. Otherwise, you'll be cross-threading and then it'll be difficult to put the screws in. Difficult or not impossible. Okay. And I'll go back and tighten them all down. The 24 pin and all the power supply connectors go in only one way. You can't put them in backwards. And as you're putting them in, you don't have to worry about holding it down on that little piece of plastic. It's only for when you're ejecting them that you need to hold down on that. Push them until they stop, or sometimes they make a little click noise when they're actually in. Okay, so this one I'm going to take up under here and plug it into the DVD drive. These connectors don't actually have eject little eject um, brackets you have to kind of push in on. I'm not sure what to call those. All right, I need another one down here for the solid state drive. And these only go in one way as well. There's a little pin that makes them so they can only go in one way. Can't put them in backward. So here we've got some extra power cords. What I'm gonna do is just 
bunch them up and use a twist tie. Come over here. There we go. Just kind of put it over that way. All right. Got everything hooked up and the cables up and out of the way. Let's give her power and internet video keyboard mouse All right, primary power switch is on and power on okay Let's see if we get something on the monitor Got a beep from the computer. There you go. Bio's coming up. It should boot into Windows 10. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn that away so you can't see my client's info. So that's pretty basic power supply troubleshooting on a desktop computer. Now, if that didn't work, if I didn't get video, um, I would first try another power supply just because it is possible for a brand new power supply out of the box not to work and I've got a few uh, more sitting over there. Um, the next thing after that would be more than likely an issue with the the RAM and then the motherboard and then finally the processor. But given the symptoms it was, it was uh, displaying, um, I was relatively sure it was a problem with the power supply and that uh, turns out to be the case. Thanks for watching.